Hey guys, in today's video I'll be showing you how you can change the mechanical oil seal out from your water pump and we will also be covering how to do an oil change and how to fill up your coolant in your motorbike. I'll be working on a Kawasaki Ninja 650R 2006 model. Without further ado, roll my new intro. talk about before we proceed and I realized that I hadn't included this in the footage that I previously shot this mechanical it's actually referred to as a mechanical water seal and I keep calling it a mechanical oil seal it does seal the oil from the coolant so this is the coolant side this is the side where the impeller is and you'll see that in a minute and this is the side where the oil is this is what actually tends to wear out this is rubber and there's a bit of a spring here and that kind of keeps everything in place and the shaft that runs through there eventually that's where the oil starts to come through and where it drips out is actually that point there now I've replaced the seal myself the first time I did it and it was very very difficult I didn't have the correct tools so what I do is I have a spare one of these and I actually take this to the mechanic purchase the parts and then they change that out for me for only the 30 Australian dollars. They've got the right tools, they've got the right equipment to do it without damaging this and it's just a lot easier if you get somebody to do that for you. Because to press it out you need to put it in a press and have a thing that looks a bit like a socket. I guess you probably could use a type of so socket and something that you put on the other side here. This metal is quite soft, I think it's aluminium and you press the old seal out and you're going to press the new seal in you can see that so if you want to give that a go go for it but that's really something that I leave to the mechanics because they've got the press they've got the right tools and it just makes life a lot easier here we see the oil coming out it's actually coming out of this just there and it's very misleading because you'll see all this oil all over the bottom of the engine. Well, and it's designed to stop the oil from mixing with the coolant. I need a 16 mil socket. Now this oil is really hot. I wouldn't normally do it this hot. But um I just got home, I'm gonna drain all the oil out. Bit of a rush. It's gonna be really hot if you've just ridden the bike. So okay, here we go, we're about to drain the coolant. And what I like to do when I do this is I will actually run it through a filter. Like so. So what you want to do first is actually loosen the radiator cap on the top of your radiator. So it's this little bolt here. Shouldn't be too tight. Loosen it off. Coolant's going to come out. And I'm going to be putting my gloves on very shortly. So you see how it's just trickling out like that? That is because I haven't fully loosened this radiator cap off yet. There it goes. So it's good to see, it's just good to get a little bit of an idea of what's going on inside your motor. It's just something that my old mechanic taught me. And I like to just pass that through a filter. I pass it through a filter when I drain it off, just to see what's going on in the motor. And then when I put it back in the motor, I will put it through that filter again. So now we're gonna leave that bucket under there. The next thing we're gonna do is actually number these one, two, three, four, five bolts. I've numbered the bolt at the top. One, two, three, four, five. Just something that I do 
just makes it a lot easier when you're putting everything back together. So the next step is we're going to loosen this hose clamp. Notice that I'm still leaving this bucket here. And is at this point that I might put my gloves on because this is where it can get a little messy. So we just loosen that off. Okay, so here we go. This little one at the top tends to be a little bit tricky. I might just get an extension for that one. Now these shouldn't be too tight because if you over tighten them, you're going to damage them and then you're going to be in all kinds of trouble. As I said before, if you want to, you can remove this cover. And we'll make it a bit easier if it's the first time you're doing this. But personally, I prefer to just leave it on because it just adds uh, quite a lot of time onto the process. Now this can be a little bit tricky, but there is actually a little tab over here to pull on. So I'm just giving this a little bit of a clean up okay, so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure that we get a good seal. I've also taken a little bit of sandpaper and just cleaned the little bit of buildup of rust that we have on there. Now just remember, we want to just put a bit of oil on there so that that seal slides on there without being bent over. I'm just going to place a bit of toilet paper in there just to stop that. I don't want coolant in this chamber at all. I want it dry and clean before I proceed. So now I'm going to take my mechanical oil seal. All right. I've also got to remember that on the back, on the back of the impeller, is a ceramic washer. So we want to pull that out. So just pop that out. So remember the white side was facing towards us. Again, I'll give that a bit of a clean. Clean that up. White side towards us. down when you tighten that bolt up so that's ready to go on so this is the part where you really need to be careful this shaft where this rubber piece goes onto that shaft you want to make sure that that is lubricated so it doesn't damage that one oh, it's still new I'm just going to use a little bit of engine oil put on there put on there and also I'm going to be replacing this this little rubber seal here, we're going to pop that off. All bits there. We're going to grab the replacement. New one, old one. Okay, so here we're going to replace this seal. It goes in here. Alright, so I'll just put a little bit of that bearing grease on it so that as it compresses it's not gonna it gets a chance to kind of move into position without breaking it also kind of helps it stick into place while you're working with it so there it is in place ready to go on one final check gasket again I'm just gonna put a little bit more oil and here is where we want to be really careful Line it up really well, nice and gentle, get everything lined up, and that should just clip back on, nice and easy, get out of the way, don't force it, it will require a little bit of pressure, but that's it. 
that's on there. So we've got one more seal that needs to get go into place. Is it going to position? That is the seal that is on the back of the water housing. There's a the new one. Take out the old one. And then there are a while. Pretty old. It feels it doesn't feel as elastic as the new one. Same thing. Clean it up. So we're going to place. Again, a little bit of bearing grease on there. Stop it from, kind of the same reason why when you put a new oil filter on, you put a bit of, smear a bit of oil onto that seal, and that will just, especially when you're screwing that oil filter back in, if it's made contact with the metal and it doesn't have some kind of lubrication, it could kind of stretch and pull and tear. That will also happen if you over tighten your oil filter crush the gasket and possibly tear it. Now we're going to put the impeller back on. Nice and easy. So there's that springs engaging. That holds everything in place. I put that bolt back on and this is the first time we're going to actually see the torque wrench being used. Now please, please, please do not try and do this by hand because it's really something you want to have just right. If it's not, it could come loose, and then you'll have to go in there and undo it and redo it. Go through this whole process of draining all the fluids again. And also, if it does slip loose and you don't know it, that impeller's not going to be working and it's not going to be able to drive the coolant around your motor. So this bolt here, and I'm going to check the torque spec now. And we'll set that, and then I'll show you how that's done. 7 inch pounds. I'm working in newton meters with my particular torque wrench. Please make sure that you get that absolutely right. So we're referring to this bolt here. 9.8. And this is, you just set that to the correct setting. Lock it in place so it doesn't move, so you know you're being accurate. And it's actually surprisingly not as much force as you think it would be. Make sure you everything's secure. And that's it. It's really not nearly as much force as you'd think you need. And that's it. When I did it the first time, I completely over tightened it and snap that bolt off and then I had to try and well I didn't try eventually got it done to get that out excellent so that's been tightened to spec to the specifications we're going to put the cover back on make sure that our little trap for young players make sure that the hose clamp is on and is in the position that you want it so that you can actually do it up nice and easy Put that on first. Very difficult to push the hose onto there once it's bolted onto your bike. So get that on there. Excellent. Make sure it's in place. Double check that your gasket hasn't moved. Line it up. Make sure it's straight. And once that's in position, make sure everything's lined up. Don't forget to put, I like to do this first because you don't want to forget to put your drain plug bolt back in. Pop that back on. So when you're tightening these up, you want to go get them all in finger tight, push it down as firmly as you can. And here's where your numbering system comes in handy. Number one's the trickiest one. Get that in. Just get it so it's not going to fall out. Okay, number two. Number three. So just place them in there. little drain bolt is set a little bit less and it's set at 7.0 newton meters
Right, next thing we're going to do is remove the oil filter. And I highly recommend you get one of these tools. It is in a little bit of an awkward spot, quite tricky to get to. And it just makes that process a whole lot easier. So remember, there is going to be a little bit of oil that comes out when you do this. And what you need to remember to do is just rub a little bit of engine oil on that gasket just to make sure that it seats properly, doesn't stretch and get damaged. Be really careful to make sure that you engage the thread properly when you do this. Hand tighten, again it's a little bit of a tricky angle so I just like to give it a couple of tweaks with that, not to don't over tighten it, that's all you need to do. Don't forget that we need to replace the drain bolt. Place that drain bolt, tighten it up. I'll torque that to specification. So we replace the drain bolt, we've changed the filter, we've replaced the seal here. So the next thing we need to do is make sure we tighten this hose clamp up, otherwise your coolant will leak. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this cover so that we can get to the coolant reservoir. Tenor socket, with that little extension bar. Just to loosen off the bolt that holds the coolant reservoir in place. It's easier to do this with this fairing removed. All I'm trying to do is just make a little bit of room Move that bottle out of the way. I'm just going to show you what we're doing there. We've loosened that coolant reservoir and we want to just be able to access that radiator cap right there. So we attach the end of that hose to the funnel that just sits in your brake lever. I'm going to pour about half of this coolant back in, nice and slow. Back through the filter, nice and slow, a little bit at a time. We're getting to the point, so you get about two thirds of the way through. Good, so that's as full as it will get. There's still a bit of coolant in the bottom of that bucket. The rest of it we're going to put into the overflow reservoir. Now what we're going to do, replace that radiator cap. Make sure that it's on there properly. Put your overflow bottle back in place. Don't over tighten this, otherwise you'll crack that plastic. Take the lid off the overflow. Put the last, okay, how much of this? It's a bit in there. And that way we know all of the coolant that was in the system before we started the process is back into the bike. And apart from the little bit that we've lost due to a small amount of spillage, we know that we've got enough coolant in the bike. So let's put that back on. Remember when you're checking the coolant level on these particular bikes, you want the bike level as it is now. Like our paddock stand, it's a good way to do it. Okay, so we've got this cover back on, that's all in place. We replace the coolant. We've double checked all of our bolts. Only thing we've got left to do now is to put new oil in and then that, run the bike for a test in the workshop. And then if I'm happy with how she's looking after that, we'll take her for a run. Turn her on, in neutral.
highly recommend that you get one of these, a torque wrench. You don't have to buy a super expensive one. Just a little one like this will make your life a lot easier and will take the guesswork out of trying to get your nuts tightened up properly. That sounds weird, getting your nuts tightened properly.